So yeah, good evening everyone. I'm back. So this whole talk was supposed to be given by my colleague and friend Saki Bansari, uh, who has built this amazing product called Frappe Insights. So I'm, uh, due to a medical condition, he was not able to attend the conference. So on behalf of him, I will be giving uh, the talk. So Saki was earlier in the accounts team. So he was not able to leave the accounts team, or, or as he used to say, accounts team was not leaving him. And then finally, he took the hard step and left the accounting, uh, accounting team and built this awesome product in just a span of three months. So huge round of applause to him. So I'll skip to the, uh, through the slides very quickly so we can focus on the demo due to time constraints. So what is Frappe Insights? Frappe Insights is basic, uh, basically a business analytics tool. Uh, you can write complex queries without even touching SQL. You can visualize your data within just a click. And you can monitor your uh, business metrics using dashboards. Uh, it uses Frappe UI under the hood. You can connect multiple da data sources. Uh, for example, uh, we use this in our uh, Frappe team as well. So we are now completely using Frappe, uh, Frappe Insights to analyze our data, which can come from any number of websites, ERP next instances. Yeah, this is the flow. So these are the most common features, like you can join, summarize, filter data. You can create dashboards. Okay. Let's see it in action. So, is it visible? Now? Yeah. It's fine, right? Okay. So here you can see there is one data source that is created by default, that is the demo database, right? So, what we will do is, we'll answer some questions. Uh, just a second. Yeah. So, as a business, we don't like to code, right? But we want answers to these questions. So let's start by answering the first question. How many sellers do we have? Right? So let me create a new query. Uh, the data source, you can choose what source of, from where the data should be pulled in. The table, so the question is for sellers. So let's select the sellers table. And you can give the query a name. Uh, let's give uh, number of sellers. Right? The query is created, and you can immediately see the table data at the bottom part of the screen. And there are like three columns. First is the column for tables. You can have multiple tables, joins, and then you have the columns there, and filters. So we'll go through them. So the question was, how many sellers do, do we have, right? So let's add a column, and there are three things. So dimension is basically the column you want to uh, group by. We'll come to, uh, to that later. But the easiest one is metric. In metric, you can directly go here and select aggregate query. So let's just do count of records and done. We got the count of the sellers in our database. So if you look at the top, so it's yeah right hand corner, you can directly come here and visualize it. So we can select count of records. That's the visualization created, right? In just a click. You can add prefix, suffix to the visualization. And we'll come to the, you can save this visualization as well. So you can use it later. So we'll just save it for now. And we'll see add to dashboard in the next question. So the next question is a little high level than this one. How many orders we are getting per month? So assume this is an e-commerce thing, and we want to see how many orders we are getting per month. So let's go to queries. So 
that query was saved, number of sellers. Let's create another query. So by looking at this question, how many orders per month? So basically, we have to drive the data from the order strip, orders table. So let, so you get all the auto complete niceness. Okay. Orders per month. Let's see how fast we can do. <laughs> so this is like the same. It fetched the data from the order table. And let's try even faster. So we have to group by month, right? So let's, in the dimension, you have to give which column do you want to group by. So let's group by, uh, so orders by month means we want to see when it was purchased. So if you see there is a column called order purchase timestamp, let's use that column, order purchase timestamp. And you can give the label that it shows in the report and you can select a format. So there are pre-built date formats, so you don't have to write something like cryptic format you write in Python or JavaScript. Let's select this, uh, add it. So we got the orders, like groupings, but we didn't define what we want from that group. So let's go to metric. Let count the number of records. And boom. We have orders per month. Cool. Let's end to the next question. What are the top selling product categories? Now this is a complex one because if you look at the data source and uh, you look here, there are like order item table is separate and there is a product table which contains the categories. So we have to join the two tables and then find out what categories are like the most purchased ones. So let's again go to the queries tab. Let's create a new query. So here, order items will be the main, uh, let's say top 10 categories. Okay. So we got the order items table. Let's join. Yeah, I know the time is out, but he has built us such an amazing product, I can't like <laughs> left it. <laughs> okay, so join is easy. You do, uh, let's do a left join. Uh, and we can select with which table we want to join. So let's, because we want the products category, so let's join the products table. And it automatically will put the condition if the columns match, right? So it automatically populated that, and let's apply. So the tables have been joined. If you see uh, this, all the product columns came aggregated. Now, now let's just add a metric to uh, categories, right? Category, product, category name, add, right? It will group by, let's count. Metric count. There is the report. But if you see the first category name, it's missing. So there are 1,603 counts which, for which the category is not set. So you can go to filters, and you can see category, and you can filter is. So only pick those rows where it is set. Done. So you can sort right from here, from the UI. So ascending or descending, let's sort, sort by top 10. This, right? Now let's visualize this. We will go to the visualize tab, line, and let's select product category name, number of records, boom. So this is the last question. Should I do this or not? <laughs> yeah. What is the average delivery time per month? Now this is like a little more complex. So average delivery time is basically 
when the customer orders the thing and when he receives it, right? So the delivery time. So let's create another query. This will obviously from the order table. Order. We'll give it a name, average delivery time. Okay, let's create. So now, if you see, there is this column called order purchase timestamp, and there is another column called order delivered customer date. So when the customer received the item, right? So we have to find the difference between the two days, the number of days, and average it out for like all the records. Let's start. We'll go to columns, and this is where we are going to go in a little deeper. So in the expressions tab, so this lets you write complex expression that you cannot just achieve by selecting columns, right? So let's start. We want to average. There is autocomplete for all the commands. So I can just hit enter. And it shows you documentation right in there, what it does. Yeah, let's start. So average of what? Average of the difference between the two times, right? So let's do time elapsed. So this is a special function that takes the unit of days and two dates and gives you the number of days that have been elapsed between the two days. So it's also a function, and I will give it a day. So we want the number of days. And the first column is when, when did the customer purchase it. So what you have to do to select columns in this expression is you just press backtick. It will show you the columns right there. So what was the column? OK, purchase date. Okay. Purchase timestamp. And then the other one was order, delivery, customer date. We can give it a label. So let's call it average delivery days. Uh, it's an integer type. Uh, it will automatically fetch 12. This is the average number of days that it took for all records. But let's go a step further. And we want to know what was the average delivery days by month. So how is it? Is You go to, metric, uh, go to dimension. Select the column. Column is again purchase timestamp. Select a day, date format. Uh, let's choose this. Add. Now you have like the group by for like per month, right? So now you can check which was the month your delivery service was like fooling you. Okay, and if you check this, there is some. Uh, RNS data as well, so NAN means there is not a date, so it tried to subtract two dates which were not existed. So it doesn't make sense to calculate the number of days when the order is not even delivered. So let's add a filter to only select those fields where the order status has been delivered. Right? Operator is like, you can select anything, but let's go to equals. Delivered, apply. Done. Now, OK, let's visualize again. You can switch to the tab, line. Uh, let's do bar this time. Like, you have to just click and click. You have to, don't have to read anything. So if you check, these are not sorted, right? Let's sort them. Uh, let's go back to build. Uh, let's sort by timestamp. Okay. It did work, right? Okay, it's sorting by something else. Yeah. Mm, bar. Okay. We didn't save. So looks like our company is in trouble. OK, let's save this. OK, the last part. We have answered all the questions in what 
Five minutes. So that's the power of Frappe Insights. Now let's create a beautiful dashboard to keep all this data in front of our eyes. So add to dashboard. So first we have to create a dashboard. Let's go to dashboard. Create a new dashboard. You can have as many as dashboards as you want. For sales, you can have separate dashboard for whatever separate departments you have. You can have separate dashboards for them. Let's call it demo. Yeah. So currently, it did, uh, doesn't have any visualizations. So let's go to our queries. Uh, let's start with this one. Add to dashboard. You can select the dashboard. OK. When you go in the dashboard, it's there. <laughs> Let's go here. Number of sellers. I'll do it for two. Uh, then we can like, see. Done. It comes in right in top of it. But what's more cool? Click Edit. OK. What's happening? Oh, yeah, the chart was on the top. <laughs> so you can drag it anywhere you want. You can resize the chart, right? Right from the UI. It's done. So why to use this? It's all from Sakib, so his slides. Automate tracking of your important KPIs, easy and rapid creation of complex reports, manual work. You can easily debug data mismatch. So there is more to come. Filters on dashboard, there is going to be an SQL editor, automatic alerts if some metric goes above or below some things. Then there are going to be public dashboards that you can share, CSV imports and more. So Frappe Insights is available right now on Frappe Cloud Ma Marketplace, as well as it is open source on GitHub. Thanks.